Say good night, asshole. <laughs> All right, good morning everyone. Uh, here we are at the Australian Computer Museum in Croydon for our third show and tell day. And today um, we're going to be starting off with Universal Soldier for the Sega Mega Drive. So this uh, game, <coughs> you can see but it's on cartridge because uh, his accolade were, were not licensed by Sega to produce games, but uh, they were able to reverse engineer it and make their own cartridges. So that's one of the odd things about this game. And we're going to get into some of the other slightly peculiar things and uh, go off on a bit of a family tree for this. So Universal Soldier, Fairly popular movie, 1992. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren. Um, there's a whole plot which you don't really need to know, but basically these guys are sort of roided up super soldiers and their friendship is tested by a bit of a disagreement about how many civilians they should kill. Um, Jean-Claude says none. Dolph says all of them. And they settle their differences with a bare knuckle fist fight until one of them is dead. I won't spoil the ending. <laughs> Sounds like social media. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, you sort of get the idea. A couple of burly blokes hitting each other a lot until one falls down. So, naturally, in the game, you are um, running around with a laser gun, shooting lots and lots of other soldiers, which, okay, they took some liberties, I guess. Um, you go around and collect giant diamonds. I guess you've got to be able to collect something. And then you go to an alien planet and there's a lot of walker robots and things like this running around. Well, you know, like, I guess again, like, like maybe the movie didn't have enough exciting stuff in it. So they had to, I mean, as long as Dolph shows up as kind of, you know, as the boss battle, right? Like, well, he does, but again, some weird stuff happens. So, I mean, you can see there is a bit of a size difference between the two characters. So just from Wikipedia, it looks like Van Damme is a bit taller than me. He's 177. Um, Dolph is quite big. He's 196 centimetres. But, you know, I mean, he's maybe a head taller. But when you meet him in the game... <laughs> so let's assume that, again, Van Damme's 177. Dolph is close on five metres in the first boss battle. And then when you see him as the final boss, he's, he's grown even more. So, I, I mean, assuming it's only half of him, I figure he's close on 10 metres tall. Yeah. Eat, eat your greens, kids, and you can be as big as Dolph. Yeah, so, like, how's he doing this? And then the other odd thing is that there's some weird mechanics in it. Like, uh, you might remember from Metroid, the Morph Ball. So Samus is uh, running around in a kind of, you know, cyber suit that she has and then can turn into a little ball and roll around that's... I mean, how does that, you know, does she kind of curl up into it? Is she sitting in it while it rolls around her? Is she sort of in a hoop snake configuration? We don't really know. But, you know, the, the flexible Belgian Van Damme is, is able to go one better by turning into this sort of knee-high buzzsaw here, you know, and then roll around. So it's, uh, you know, a real, real feat of how can you do this? And, of course, the reason is that if we look at Universal Soldier and then we compare it to um, an Amiga game, which is Turrican 2, we can see that it's actually the same game, but it's just uh, had its sprites swapped. And there is a whole history to this. And so I'm in fact not going to be talking about the history of the Universal Soldier game. I'm going to be talking about the history of the Turrican series. And that starts with this cool looking gentleman here, Manfred Trenz. He was a programmer living in Germany in the 80s, uh, working on the Commodore 64. And he got famous for things like he did the Great Diana Sisters, which was such a good copy of the Mario Brothers that I think they were sued over it. He then did Katakis, which was such a good copy of R-Type that not only were they sued for it, but he was then um, effectively forced as a settlement to create the R-Type conversion for the Commodore 64. So um, 
R type on the Commodore 64 is, is really this guy's clone, which is then converted for free so that uh, Namco wouldn't sue him. So he's. Yeah, so he's got, got a history of you know, kind of taking these other ideas. So for his next game, um, apparently there was this arcade game, Psycho Nix Oscar, which is not very well known. Pretty much the only thing it's really known for is that it was the inspiration for the game Taraki. And so he's got the kind of you know, mechanics of this, and then he's combined it with the more open levels and the more fall from Metroid to create the game Turrican. And so Turrican has come out on the Commodore 64. Um, they have got another team in the same house there to do an Amiga version, which has, uh, you know, been extremely popular, especially because it had a soundtrack that was really good. There was a guy called Chris Hulesbeck who did all the uh, music for the Amiga version. And he's actually, he, will, he still now does live shows where he conducts an orchestra to perform those songs. And I've got here... Turrican for the Mega Drive, which is a fairly faithful uh, port of the Amiga version, except that for some reason they've only given you one quarter as much health. So it's pretty much impossible to finish the game because uh, anything touches you and you die. Um, and you can see like this particular one, I picked it up from a secondhand shop in Singapore and there's no barcodes on it and no publisher's logo. So I'm guessing that it's fairly bootlegged. But, you know, it, it does work on the Mega Drive, so that's there. Okay, so we've got Turrican, and then we've gone to Turrican 2, because Turrican was quite a success. And so, um, again, Manfred's done this Commodore 64 version. We've got an Amiga version. And then a few years later, there was actually a PC version, which uh, is at a higher resolution, has all new graphics. So I've included that even though it was, I guess, an offshoot, really. And one of the offshoots from the Amiga version then goes to Universal Soldier. Uh, I think the reason, as far as I can tell, is that Turrican on the Mega Drive, it was their first attempt to kind of break into the console market and also the US market. Uh, but maybe because of the health thing that I mentioned, uh, the game is not very popular. So when they've got Turrican 2 on the, on the boil, They've got a really good game coming up. It's actually a lot better than Turrican 1 on that system. But the name is kind of mud, you know, like Sega fans don't really like Turrican. At the same time, the publisher has picked up the movie license for this Universal Soldier movie. And so they've gone, well, let's just get this existing game. We'll stick Van Damme on the box and hopefully sell a few copies. And so that's how that has then come about. So from that then... They've gone to Turrican 3, and they, they actually decided to use um, the Mega Drive as the lead uh, sort of platform for this. So they've started developing the game Mega Turrican, which is essentially Turrican 3 on the Mega Drive. But they've then run into some uh, trouble again with publishers, this sort of stuff. And then another publisher has agreed to pick up an Amiga version. So they've ported it back to the Amiga and you can see they've actually had to remove some of the graphical elements, that sort of stuff because of the differences in the graphics chips. And so the Amiga Turrican 3 has come out in 1993 while Mega Turrican, which was finished earlier, was then delayed until 1994. So that then I guess is, is the, the later one. And the other thing was because of limitations in the size of the cartridge that they could get, they've had to cut out a few levels. And so we've got this sort of odd situation where you have Mega Turrican looking better, but then Turrican 3 having more content. <coughs> uh, at the same time, on the Super Nintendo, of course it's on the Super Nintendo, like everything on that console has to be called Super, so we've got Super Turrican. Uh, so Super Turrican is very much in the vein of Tarakin 2, but instead of the, the usual kind of swivel gun that he has, it's uh, a freeze ray, so he can freeze the enemies and then shoot them while they're frozen. Uh, and it uses a lot of things. You can see like where the big giant hand kind of scales in and out using the Mode 7 scaling stuff that was very popular on that. And then Super Tarakin has sold quite well, so they've then gone and made Super Tarakin 2, which is not a conversion of Tarakin 2, but is a sequel to Super Turrican, 
which I guess you could say Super Turrican was kind of the Nintendo version of Turrican 3, which would make this Turrican 4. I was going to say that the naming convention is worse than HP Fridges of the 90s. Yeah. So we've, we've, we've got up to 1995 here. And so now we've got the, um, you know, the full kind of family of Turricans growing out here. And again, because of cartridge uh, limitations, they've had to cut out a lot of content from the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo games. So, I was actually quite fortunate to spot this when it came out. This is um, the Turrican Collector's Edition from Strictly Limited Games. <clears throat> and so, they give you a lot of nice little things here. We've got the soundtrack CD, which I still haven't opened, so maybe I can pull that out and play it later. Got this lovely poster, which looks like it was done in pencil, actually, but um, and then someone's got some time into that. We've got these postcards, so you can say, you know, wish you were a Torokin, I guess. <laughs> and we've then got, um, we've got the posters, so we can put your beer on these, I guess. You have Tara cans. Yep. We've got another soundtrack CD, so some of the other tracks which went on that one. Get the Turrican badge. You can show off your love of Turrican. There are, there are. So there's more posters, more stickers. We have uh, the Turrican documentary. So this will tell you all the history of the, the series. On Blu ray, no less. Yeah, on Blu ray, so we can see it in full HD. And uh, we've also got not one, but two discs with the complete. Turrican series and these are also quite special in that the console versions that had to be cut down have had their cut content restored and so these are called the director's cuts <laughs> so you get mega Turrican director's cut super Turrican director's cut that sort of thing also known as all the people that were suing us have gone out of business <laughs> that's probably it yeah <laughs> and so yeah so, so that's kind of the you know the the legacy of Turrican now then there were a few planned sequels which were in the works, and so they had the, a kind of a 3D one, which I think I've heard was going on the Dreamcast, but was then cancelled. Uh, at some stage on the PlayStation 3, then they've had a go at making another sequel, which uh, didn't even get a name. And then it sort of fizzled out, and so there's not really a new Turrican game as such, except... So this game is called uh, Gunlord X. So Gunlord was a game which was actually made for the Neo Geo console by an indie developer in 2012. And then they've ported it over to PS4 and also Nintendo Switch. So you can still buy this game on those uh, systems. It's usually pretty cheap on the online stores. And we can see there's a definite kind of pixel aesthetic here. And we'll just go to stage one. And here's our little character. And he's got a swivel gun. You can turn into a... Oh, I don't know. I mean, it was an Amiga game. I think it's just... Yeah, I think it's really just how Amiga games would work. And, but yeah, you can see he's got the pillars that you would have in Turrican. We've got these little Mario jump blocks, which you can also shoot and have power-ups come out. We've got the bounce shot. So it's really kind of, I get, I guess, a love letter to Turrican 2, this game. It's got everything that's in Turrican 2, but with a lot of quality of life. So instead of having to hold down fire and move your joystick, you can just use your right stick to do this and run around with your left stick, that kind of stuff. So just uh, to, to recap, though, this is on PlayStation. Yeah, it's on PS4. So, so this is a native. This was released on PS4. As yep. a very classic shoot em up on the 80s and 90s. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So yeah, this is a brand new game, which was obviously someone who loved the Tarakin games as much as me and just wanted to, you know, recreate it. So yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, you know, you can still buy this now. 
Uh, there is a physical release, which um, I've been silly enough to order. So when that shows up, I'll, I'll make a video about that. And yeah, that's kind of how we get from, you know, Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren punching each other to, you know, retro revival games on the PlayStation 4 via Commodore 64 and everything in between. And so that is Tarkin. So thank you. Thanks for watching.